mysterious beginnings, distinct ideologies, and the need to kill for political and religious doctrines. The life of Hassan Saba was one full of mystery, spiritual guidance, and assassination plots. The order which Hassan founded, known as the Hashashins, or simply the Assassins, would cause much fear in the hearts of many Crusader lords, several kings, emperors, and even sultans. From a lowly missionary, his cause and character won the hearts and minds of many. Also known as the Elder of the Mountain, he began expanding his political power through assassinations. The assassins' strength came from the fanatical loyalty of their members, who were highly trained in the art of murder and philosophy. The order itself was shrouded in mysticism, and the renowned story of how Hassan founded the order, and everything that came after, has gone down in legend. So let's delve into the life and practices of one of the most interesting and mysterious men to ever exist in the Middle East. I would like to thank Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers. This has resulted in Magellan TV having the most varied and interesting history content available anywhere. It covers ancient history, modern history, war, biographies, and so much more. On the platform I have personally been watching the Quran, Journey to the Book's Origins. This includes the tales told in the Muslim tradition that have begun to come to light in recent scientific discoveries. Discover where the Quran took shape, how it was developed and passed on, and how leading historians now trace the spread of its rich traditions. This ties into today's topic with the old man of the mountain and his own personal doctrine. 15 to 20 hours of new content is added each week with a growing collection of 4K high-definition content. Magellan TV can also be watched anytime, anywhere, on your laptop, TV, or mobile. History Profiles viewers will get a one-month free trial by clicking the link in the description, and the annual membership cost is $59.88, so it's only $4.99 a month. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description. Many sources state that Hassan was born in the city of Gom in the 1050s. However, early in his life, his family would move to Ray in Iran. Ray was a city that had a history of Islamic thought. It was here that Hassan would develop an interest in the metaphysical and spiritualism. Hassan was also an extremely clever and studious boy. He would study palm mystery, language, philosophy, astronomy and mathematics. At the age of 17, Hassan converted to Islam and swore allegiance to the Fatimid Caliph in Cairo. Hassan was extremely devout and many elders would be impressed by his eagerness to learn. Soon enough, he would embark on his journey to Cairo. Along the way, he would travel to many different regions. He went to Azerbaijan and Armenia. Hassan at this point was already an expert conversationalist and his charisma was second to none. He wouldn't shy away from a debate if he disagreed with something, as he was devout in his ideologies regarding the Shia aspect of Islam. This would lead to Hassan getting thrown out of towns regularly. He would go to Damascus in Syria, Palestine, and would finally reach Egypt in 1078. It is unclear for how long he stayed in Egypt, but he would continue studying as was his way, and he became a full-on missionary. While he was in Cairo, he would study and preach, but he soon ran into some problems. He was thrown in jail due to political reasons, as he would spread the word of the Shia, but he was quickly released and deported. This only emboldened Hassan, and he once again travelled around the world. He toured extensively throughout Persia, and he eventually ended up in northern Iran. Nizam al-Mulk, the de facto ruler of the Suljic Empire, would order Hassan to be captured and arrested, and would dispatch soldiers to look for him. 
as the doctrine he was preaching was different to that of the Sunni Muslim. With Hassan now being a wanted man, he had to search for a base to hide out in. He was living in the northern town of Kazvin, which was 60 kilometers from Alamut Castle, a mountain fortress which was thought to be impregnable from any military attack. It was also fabled for its heavenly gardens, library, and ancient laboratories, where philosophers, scientists, and theologians could debate in intellectual freedom. Hassan had not only stumbled upon a fortress in which he would be safe from the ruler of the Suljic Empire, but he could also continue his love for studying and controversial debate. Hassan was just one man though, he had no army or warriors loyal to him, so how would he take the castle? In the summer of the year 1090, Hassan would journey toward the mountain fortress. As an expert conversationalist and a charming man, he would gain the friendship and loyalty of many of the soldiers at the castle, but he was careful to not attract the attention of the castle's lord, as one mishap, and he would be arrested. With the castle deputy now on his side, the only new employees of the fortress would be converts who Hassan or his trusted missionaries had interacted with directly. With the castle now full of Hassan's allies, he was able to take the castle without any bloodshed. When the time came, he confronted the lord of the castle, and simply told him the castle was his. The shift of power had turned, as the guards and soldiers now stood guard for Hassan. The lord signed over the castle, and Hassan would become the new master and lord of Alamut Castle. Hassan would soon begin to change though. His Islamic religious group believed that Islam should be led by the descendants of Muhammad. However, Hassan would form a splinter group. He would become the founder of the Nizari Ismaili state, which marked an era of Ismailism known as the Alamut period, and the followers of Hassan would soon come to be known as the Assassins or Hashashins. He would soon begin to expand his political power through his assassins, but how did this come about? According to legend, Hassan's loyal followers and friends who he had amassed through his charisma and near infallible speeches throughout his travels and in the castle itself, would search the land for young strong teenage boys with fighting potential. Hassan's followers would then drug the young boys with hashish, and they would fall into a deep slumber. When they awoke, they would find themselves in the secret and wondrous garden of Alamut Castle. The boys were surrounded by the most beautiful women they had ever seen, and the wonders of the garden made the young teenage boys think they had arrived in paradise. After a few days, the boys were re-drugged, but now when they awoke, they were in the castle. In order to return to the garden, they would need to follow Hassan's orders. The boys had such a phenomenal time in the gardens that they no longer feared death and longed to die to return to the heavenly garden paradise, or so the story goes. Hassan's ultimate goal was for all Muslims to adopt the Shia doctrine that he believed to be correct regarding Islam. It is believed that Hassan lost himself in the fortress of Alamut, and the library supposedly contained over 200,000 books on a variety of subjects, including political power, philosophy, religion, and the control of the spirits. Word would spread that Hassan had taken over the fortress of Alamut, and the Suljiks, a Sunni Muslim dynasty, would ask Hassan to accept their supremacy. Hassan would simply reply, We cannot obey the orders of others except our Imam. The maternal glory of kings cannot impress us. He then said, Tell your king to let us live at our cell in peace. 
we will be compelled to take arms if we are tested. The army of the Maliksha has no spirit to fight with our warriors, who do not give importance to this little span of life. Soon enough, the Suljic forces would lay siege to the fortress of Alamut. Unable to take it by storm, they would starve Hassam out and cut off his water supply. Hassan would refuse to surrender and persuaded his garrison to continue to resist, declaring to have received a special message from Imam Mustansir Billah from Cairo, who promised them good fortune. Due to Hassan's strong belief in his doctrine, this gave him a ray of hope. To Hassan and his men's amazement, the leader of the Suljic forces Turan Tash died in a raid, and so the siege was broken. This kindled a flame of enthusiasm that glowed hidden in the hearts of Hassan's followers. The spirit of deep-rooted faith was now completely there for all of Hassan's men, and this painful victory strengthened the root of Ismailism at Alamut. Hassan at his core was still a man of peace, and would try to dissuade the Sultan of the Suljic Turks from his attacks, but it was in vain. Hassan's men had now been trained in the art of murder, stealth, martial arts, and were experts with several weapons. As well as being expert warrior assassins, they were also fanatically loyal to him and his cause, and Hassan would finally unleash one. One night as the Sultan went to his chambers, he found a dagger on the side of his bed, with a note around its hilt, which read, let it not deceive you that I lie far from you on the rock of Alamut, because those whom you have chosen for your service command and obey my direction. One who could fix this dagger in your bed, could also have planted it in your heart, but I saw you a good man, and have spared you, so let this be a warning to you. The Sultan was filled with great awe, and concluded a pact of peace with Hassan, recognising the independent state of the Nizari Ismailis. Hassan would die in 1124, in his 70s, but his cause would live on, and the order of assassins would continue. As time went on, many would fall by the hand of the Hashashins or the assassins, and they would become legendary all over the world. Hassan Saba, also towards the end of his life, became known as the Old Man, or Elder of the Mountain. Through his charisma and ferocity to never give up, he began something far bigger than himself, that would last centuries, but it would also cause the death of many. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.